U.S. Navy officers organized a coup to overthrow the government of Hawaii in 1893 in order to establish military bases to support plans for an American empire. There are 118 military sites throughout the Hawaiian Islands that were established without the approval of native Hawaiians. These occupy 13,000 acres, one quarter of the main island of Oahu. While the Big Island of Hawaii has a 133,000 acre Army training base. Historical accounts ignore how this occurred. They document that the U.S. Navy played a role in the 1893 coup to oust Queen Lai Liokalani, but suggests the Marines and sailors were just following orders. Official history is that an American diplomat ordered troops from the USS Boston ashore to protect American lives and property. And this is true. The 13 wealthy white coup plotters feared arrest after threatening to overthrow the government. However, coup leaders boldly demanded the Queen abdicate only because they were assured by U.S. Navy Commodore Joseph Skerritt that American troops would land to oust Queen Lailio Kalani if she did not agree to step down. When she refused, U.S. troops came ashore and set up camp outside her palace. These events are well documented in articles and YouTube videos, but the key role of the U.S. Navy is overlooked. American interest in Hawaiian military bases began when the USS Constitution dropped anchor off Honolulu in 1845. Officers found the area unsuitable for a naval base, but noted an outstanding harbor nearby, now known as Pearl Harbor. In 1873, the USS California with Rear Admiral Alexander Pinnock arrived in Hawaii with a military commission that included U.S. Army General Schofield and Alexander. This commission was under secret instructions from the Secretary of War, William Belknap, to examine the different ports of the Hawaiian Islands with reference to their defensive capabilities. The commission concluded its shores are suitable for building proper establishments for sheltering the necessary supplies for a naval establishment, such as magazines for ammunition, provisions, coal, spars, rigging, etc. While the island of Oahu, upon which it is situated, could furnish fresh provisions, meats, fruits, and vegetables in large quantities. A reciprocal treaty was signed that year. Hawaii granted exclusive American military access to the Pearl River Lagoon in exchange for a removal of import tariffs on Hawaiian sugar. But access to Pearl was limited to a coaling and repair station. The U.S. Navy needed lots more land around the harbor for munition storage, housing, and a dry dock. It also needed to dredge the entrance of the harbor for large ships, which was opposed by locals for religious and environmental reasons. The U.S. military was willing to spend the required sums, but the Hawaiian government refused to alienate Hawaiians living around Pearl. Dredging the coral would upset their gods and allow large sharks access to tear into their numerous fish ponds. In addition, Hawaiian monarchs changed each decade, and one might suddenly end or change the treaty. As a result, development of a Pearl Harbor naval base did not occur. U.S. Navy officers were strongly influenced by a book, The Influence of Sea Power Upon History, which is a history of naval warfare published in 1890 by Alfred Thayer Mahon. Scholars consider it the single most influential book on naval strategy. The book is cited as one of the contributing factors to the United States becoming an imperial power. Appearing before a congressional committee to discuss Hawaii, Mahon endorsed its seizure, stating, it is obvious that if we do not hold the islands ourselves, we cannot expect the neutrals in war to prevent the other belligerents from occupying them, nor can the inhabitants themselves prevent such an occupation. On August 11, 1892, the cruiser USS Boston arrived at Honolulu with the new Pacific Squadron commander, Commodore Joseph Skerritt, embarked. Owing to the unsettled nature of Hawaiian politics and the presence of a relatively large American population in the islands, Hawaii had long been a frequent stopping place for Navy ships. 
the USS Boston remained in Hawaiian waters for more than a year. The Commodore, his officers and crew, spent many days ashore in Hawaii. Commodore Skerritt and the ship's captain, Gilbert Wiltsey, attended many meetings, parties, and dinners. They were fully aware of political events and knew the wealthy white landowners on the island, who were alarmed by Lailio Kalani's plan to encourage voting among Native Hawaiians with talk of sharing the wealth. In January 1893, John L. Stevens, the U.S. Minister to Hawaii, who openly favored the annexation of Hawaii, and wealthy white landowners demanded that Queen Lailio Kalani abdicate her throne. The USS Boston's Captain Wiltsey sent a landing party with armed Marines and sailors ashore. One account noted, Lailio Kalani watched as over 120 Marines and sailors marched past her palace with rapid-fire gatling guns and set up camp a few hundred yards away. Another 40 men stood guard outside of Stevens' residence, who was the spokesman for the plotters. The Queen had some 500 armed men as part of her palace guard and local police. However, she feared bloodshed and agreed to step down in hopes that she could return once world leaders intervened. A bloodless coup was successful, and John L. Stevens, the U.S. Minister to Hawaii, who openly favored annexation of Hawaii by the United States, proclaimed Hawaii a U.S. protectorate without any approval from the State Department or the U.S. President. He distributed a notice that the U.S. government recognized this new provisional government formed by wealthy landowners. At the request of the provisional government of the Hawaiian Islands, I hereby, in the name of the United States of America, assume the protection of the Hawaiian Islands for the protection of life and property and occupation of the public buildings and Hawaiian soil, so far as may be necessary for the purpose of specified, but not interfering with the administration of public affairs by the provisional government. This action is taken pending and subject to negotiations at Washington. And it's signed by the American diplomatic representative John L. Stevens. But also note that Navy Captain Gilbert Wiltsey approved and executed this action, which is proof that he was a lead plotter. Captain Wiltsey openly bragged around Honolulu that he put the American flag up over Hawaii. He stated, I will keep it there. No man shall dare haul it down. While I am on these islands, that flag shall not come down unless over my dead body. No, not even if the President of the United States orders it. A treaty for Hawaiian annexation was drawn up just before U.S. President Benjamin Harrison left office, but it failed Senate ratification. President Grover Cleveland withdrew the treaty from consideration and sent former Congressman James H. Blount to investigate the situation in Hawaii. Blount reported that Stevens had acted improperly and that most Hawaiians opposed annexation. American flags were removed from Hawaii and sailors and Marines returned to the USS Boston. Commodore Skerritt was transferred to the Far East and Captain Wiltsey retired. Skerritt's role is never mentioned in historical accounts, even though this photo was taken of him inspecting his troops in front of the palace the day before Queen Leo Lacani abdicated. Navy leaders later promoted Scare to Rear Admiral for his role in orchestrating the successful coup. President Cleveland's successor, William McKinley, sent a new annexation treaty to the Senate in 1897, but it failed again. Finally, on July 7, 1898, during the excitement over the Spanish-American War, both houses of Congress ratified Hawaiian annexation by joint resolution a procedure that required only a simple majority of the votes cast rather than the two-thirds vote required for a treaty passage in the Senate. The U.S. military buildup in Hawaii began immediately as troops marched ashore from the USS Philadelphia. The first Army base was established at Waikiki called Camp McKinley, now known as Kapaloni Park. The next year, Congress appropriated funds to begin dredging Pearl Harbor. In 1908, the Navy began expanding its Pearl Harbor base to become the principal naval base in the Pacific by seizing land from Hawaiian farmers using eminent domain. To protect Pearl Harbor, the Army greatly expanded its Oahu garrison and in 1913 established the Hawaiian Department Command. 
The Army built air bases and formidable coastal defenses, while the Army garrison grew to 43,000 men prior to World War II. Military expansion continued after the war so that it now occupies more than 13,000 acres of Oahu. This development has benefited Hawaiians with jobs and infrastructure. But there is a downside. There are approximately 749 contaminated sites within the Pearl Harbor neighbor complex, which the EPA considers the most polluted of all U.S. military bases worldwide. The seafood from the harbor is no longer safe to eat, and the famous pearl oysters are no more. In addition, rapid non-native Hawaiian population growth and limited land has made Hawaii one of the most expensive places to live in the United States. There is no doubt that the U.S. military conspired to invade and annex Hawaii to establish key bases to control the Pacific region. Many native Hawaiians would like the illegal occupation of Hawaii reversed, but this happened over a century ago, and Hawaiians are now less than 10% of the population. Current residents of Hawaii were not responsible for that invasion, and many non-Hawaiians have lived on these islands for generations. Nevertheless, the U.S. military occupies one quarter of Oahu, even though the threat of military invasion is non-existent. Reducing this impact is reasonable since none of this was approved by the residents of Hawaii, Returning some land to the people of Hawaii to make room for parks and middle-income housing is a good idea. For example, the airfield and communications towers at Bellows Air Force Station were shut down decades ago, but it remains as a recreation area exclusively for military personnel. Native Hawaiians are not welcome. Parts of other bases are not used or consist of old vacant homes and buildings. While the Navy and Air Force may need their other bases, there is no need for two Army combat brigades based in Hawaii. Housing costs are high, the ground training areas are extremely limited. As a result, the U.S. military should move them back to other states and return some land to the people of Hawaii. In addition, reducing the number of troops on Hawaii will reduce housing costs and urban congestion. This may prove difficult, but the first step is to recognize that it was the United States military that illegally overthrew the government of Hawaii in 1893.